Hello, this is going to be a continuation of my last video. In the last video, I looked at the azimuth of the sun for all the locations of the earth. When the sun is in the northern hemisphere, this would be the solstice in June. And in this one, I'm going to look at what it looks like when the sun is in the southern hemisphere for the December solstice. I started rendering this animation and when I saw the first frames I could see that depending where you were on the earth the azimuth for the sun was not just off it was off the rails off. You can see that for these locations it's as much as about 90 degrees off. And although you could get a boat and go anywhere on the earth, like maybe right over here, and see where the sun is relative to your position and where it should be on a flat earth, I decided I was going to see where on the earth the settlement farthest south would be. And a little bit of research later pointed to Porto Williams in Chile. So I could try somewhere in New Zealand, but just a little bit further south would be. So anybody with enough money and a plane ticket, there's the airport, could stay at one of no less than one, two, three, four hotels. And while they're there, they can also go to a museum, it would appear. Or otherwise, you could trust something like SunCalc to tell you where the sun should be. And for December 21st, 2020, for Porto Williams, the sun set at about an azimuth of 225 degrees. So that's where sunset would be for Porto Williams, Chile. And if we go back to the flat earth map, I'm going to have to go near the end of the animation. Each of these lines represents where the sun appears for that location. And when it disappears, that means that the sun has gone below the horizon and it is now after sunset. So if I keep going a little bit further, that line is probably the closest to Porto Williams. It's going to be 50 degrees south and either 60 or 70 degrees west. It's kind of hard to tell because the map is stretched and skewed. And sunset is going to be right about there. So that should be 225 degrees azimuth and the sun at that point should be north of New Zealand and a couple of hours away from being directly overhead somewhere of Australia. As you can see, simple planar geometry means that the observed sunset azimuth is at least 90 degrees off of where it should be. So this has to be some really, really seriously messed up perspective if this really was the case. Also for this video, I did make a few animations of what direction the sun should appear if the earth was a globe. When looking at 90 degrees west at the equator. And I also did another animation of what the earth would look like from the perspective of the sun. And here the camera settings that I'm using in Pavre make it look like it's a bit of a fisheye lens. Otherwise, they should all appear to be relatively in a straight line. I think in order to correct this in Pavre, I'd have to leave the camera position where it is, but not look at the center of the earth, but probably to look way up here, maybe 10, 20 times farther away from the earth. Maybe. That would mean changing the files that I used for this one. And incidentally, the files that I used to produce this animation, I'm going to add as another zip file to the Pavre files that I made available in the last video. I'm going to relink that in this video as well. So you'll be able to get the animation files for the December solstice as well as for the last video that was for the June solstice.
While I was at it, I decided I was going to include an animation that I didn't include in the last video because I was still working on some of these other modes. But in the last video, I showed that one of the rendering modes that you could use was to show what a flat earth would look like from the perspective of being on the ground. And unfortunately, I wanted to do one animation for Australia, but I accidentally forgot to change the the settings and this is what it would look like from the north pole and unfortunately the sun stays the same distance from the north pole all day long so i'm not going to include this one but i am going to include this one it happened to be while my computer was rendering this one that i had a bit of a discussion with somebody on twitter a flat earther who tried to tell us that the reason why the sun appears to sink to the horizon on a flat earth is because of perspective and he had a, an image that showed perspective lines and there's already a very tired argument that the sun appears to shrink at sunset which is proof that the sun is moving away from us when in reality it is because of camera blooming. That is when the sun is so bright that it washes out adjacent pixels and the sun appears to be larger than it really is. And so I told him, what about solar filters? A solar filter shows that the sun stays the same size throughout the entire day. Therefore, the sun stays the same distance from the observer all day therefore the sun cannot be moving away from us all day therefore earth is not flat and before i could send him a link to a video that i made over a year and a half ago showing him that i used a solar filter he called me a liar and blocked me so that is the caliber of the flat earth mentality so i'm going to include this video as well and it shows that the sun changes size for the entire day and from Australia. And I happen to pick 30 degrees south and 140 degrees east. You can look that up on a map to find out exactly where it is. But this is what it would look like if the earth was flat. And at midnight, the sun should appear there on the, in the sky. And it should not ever come anywhere close to the horizon. And you can also see that the sun changes size as it approaches and as it recedes. These arrows are the lines for where the sun should appear from 50 degrees south. The sun on the winter solstice was about 23 or 24 degrees south and of course this is looking from 30 degrees south. So I chose a point that was between the sun and a point where the arrows would be pointing towards and as you can see some of these are pointing off skimming the horizon when they should in fact be pointing slightly higher up. So the geometry clearly does not work if the earth is a flying pizza, but it works perfectly fine if the earth is a rotating oblate spheroid. So I'm going to drop the videos right about here.
And that's it for today. I really do not want this channel to be a flat earth debunking channel. I want it to be more where I work on projects that solve problems and some of those problems that I want to address in later videos that I've titled my sky watching project. So these are these are all extras at the moment. This is not really what I really wanted to do. And start working on a few other things. Ask myself a simple question like, if I were to make my own sextant from scratch in my basement, what would be the kind of accuracy that I could get out of it? And if I had to calculate my location on the earth, what would be the margin of error? So those are the kinds of videos that I've really wanted to do on this channel for some time. And in the last little bit, I've been working on these flat earth videos uh, and that's not really what I wanted to do. So that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you like these videos, I would really appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up. And I will see you again in another video soon enough. So bye for now.